Okay, so um, rest in peace, Peter Miles. Um, we're going to talk a lot about you over the next few videos. This just, I can't think of as good an episode as we've watched, like a single standalone episode. And there's a multitude of reasons why that is the case. As in why one episode is so good. Just Thank you. So all the things that are usually wrong with the Terranation story are right about this story, okay? The whole Nazi thing, because it's so played up, is so perfect. And the unremitting grimness of it is is tangible and palpable and and because it's so close to something we uh, to 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 experience you know shared experience recent experience it it feels very real it's not like planet of the daleks it's like oh it's grim and there's this jungle there's this it's so close to home so close to the knuckle that um the all the weight of those tropes um, contribute to the tone and the mood. But do you know what really makes it work? Is the fact that we have the most ebullient Doctor of all so far and one of the greatest TARDIS teams that we've seen up until this point. By this stage, I think... The thing is, you don't need Harry, but you've still got Harry. And that's what makes this team so brilliant, I think. And they cannot get out of this World War One stroke two story. They can't shake it. Uh, all the jokes break down. Even the, the failed escape, which usually would drive me nuts because it's just killing time, just serves to contribute, uh, serves to demonstrate that they cannot avoid being part of this. The fact that every reference to a Dalek thing that we're aware of already um, adds to the, to the tension, uh, you know, um, Terry Nation's cracked. I mean, it's an obvious idea, but the fact that you can sort of say, say Thals, and like, oh, so this is the Thals line. Khaled's when the Doctor spells Khaled, and it's as an anagram of, oh, that's very interesting. All of that starts to build up towards something that feels so overwhelming. And I couldn't handle Doctor Who like this every week. And you haven't got the narrative devices to do it every week. You haven't got the history to do it every week. But, but this story you can do it with. And the performances are superb. Um, but the thing I want to talk about now, and, and then I'll finish because you've got weeks and weeks of this. That cliffhanger is fantastic because I thought it was going to be, I was going to sit here and go, oh, well, it's Genesis of the Daleks, it's a Dalek cliffhanger. No, 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 no. But it's not, is it? It's not, it's not a Dalek cliffhanger. It's this person we've never, ever met before who, as Lib said, they, the camera could have lingered longer, but that's by the by, telling a Dalek what to do. And now we can begin. It's not a, oh, there's a Dalek cliffhanger. It's who the chuff is this and what the chuff is about to happen. And obviously, this character has become utterly iconic and in, indelibly linked to the Daleks. But at this stage, who is this person who has just told a Dalek what to do? That is ridiculous. My goodness me. What a run of stories this is. And bouncing off the end of the Sontaran experiment as well, you mustn't forget that, that it was all happy, happy, joy, joy, running around outside. It wasn't this nice. And to this, and you cannot escape it. You can't go away from it. Even the Time Lord thing at the start, just to drop us straight in. No messing. Boom, we're off. No TARDIS. No reassurance there. We are isolated. We are alone here. Oh, this is so good.